Now let's look at site redundancy in this module and talk about a few models and talk about the further details of site level redundancy. So primary site, um, secondary site, disaster recovery site. Now the first type of site um, is the hot site, or, and this is the most expensive um, redundant site. And obviously, we're talking about redundancy. So we're talking about an alternate site, which is declared a hot site, hot um, compared to the primary. So here we have a mirror of the primary data center. It is populated with, with the entire works, with, with the servers, the cooling, the power, office space, and some personnel, uh, possibly also, running concurrently with the main or primary data center, and it's, and it's, and it's very closely synced uh, synchronized with the primary data center, almost at a, as an exact mirror. And um, so if there is a failure in the primary data center, there would be minimal impact because you're almost maintaining an alt alternate site as a complete mirror in sync with the primary site. And then you have the other extreme, which is the cold site, which is the cheapest option. And here you have an office or a data center space, but no servers. Um, no IT equipment installed, and that's why it's called a cold site, but you have the facility, you have probably the racks ready, and then you're just ready that if, if um, a, a disaster happens or if a failure happens at the primary site, you can quickly um, bring in the IT equipment and set it up. Uh, so power cooling and office space is available, um, but the servers and equipment are migrated in the event of primary site failure. And then you have the middle ground, which is the warm site. So here what you have is um, you have some pre-installed IT equipment and server hardware uh, ready for installation of the production environment. So you don't have the exact replica or the exact mirror like we had in the hot site, but you have uh, you know, a middle ground um, ready and you can bring in images and load them onto the servers. And this requires engineering support to activate. So this is a diagram showing that we have a primary site, and then you have the DR site, which is a disaster recovery site. And if the primary site, for some reason, cannot operate in the event of an earthquake, or if there's a fire, or if there's some disaster emergency, you would fail over to the DR site or invoke the DR site. But then there's the role of a secondary site also, which brings, which brings us to the hybrid site redundancy architecture. And sometimes secondary sites are maintained by organizations because there are other functions which are between the primary and the DR. For example, you want to maintain a test bed and a test environment, or you want to maintain backups, or you want to run, uh, maintain some kind of server secondary copies, which are not for DR purposes, but just are for operational purposes. So let's look at RTO and RPO, which are very important for uh, site redundancy design, and especially for disaster recovery. So recovery time objective is a very important parameter used for disaster recovery and for alternate site redundancy. Um, the maximum amount of time following a disaster for an organization to recover files from backup storage and resume normal operations. So the maximum amount of downtime effectively that an organization can tolerate or handle is the RTO. So if the RTO is, for example, three hours and a failure happens at the primary site, then you need to bring up the service at the disaster recovery site, DR site, in three hours. What's the RPO, recovery point objective? The recovery point objective is the maximum age of files that an organization must recover from backup storage for normal operations to resume after a disaster. And this is actually, effectively, this is the minimum frequency of backups. So if you have an RPO of five hours, um, then it means that you must be backing up your information every five hours. And let's take an example uh, that I just mentioned also. If an organization has an RTO of two hours, it cannot be down for more than two hours. And if an organization has an RPO or a recovery point objective of four hours, the system must be back up. Uh, the system uh, must, must back up at least every four hours. Thank you.